Welcome to the Balls Not Court Podcast. Cortez Paul here, alongside Kevin Carter to my right hand side. Hello, Mr. Kevin Carter. Fake Paul! As you can tell, someone is very excited because football opening weekend is here. Fake Paul! And Kevin is love the word, so every time we say football, he's going to scream it. Fake Paul! <laughs> so, how you doing today? Fake Paul! <laughs> tell the people how you doing today. Football. I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing very well. Doing very as long well. as this freaking game kicks off at four o'clock. That's right. Well, we no rain. No rain. No thunder. Football. And you can be and able Nike. to see a gate. You can be able to see the Gators play for the first time of the season. Finally. Want to be great because Finally. everybody else got sport itself for us and football. Yeah, football. And Idaho and their fans. I, I, don't. I don't. I don't know. How many Idaho fans. don't have fans. I'm about to say. Well, those are two teams that all the people <laughs> that were in Idaho were down here last weekend. That was it. Now they all flew back on that charter flight. Oh, man. Well, did you know football? They canceled that game completely, so it will not be made up or played at all whatsoever. It's, that's, that's it, doesn't, it doesn't even exist. That's a bomb. And they still paid them $975,000 to fly down here. All right. Well, hey, we're going to talk number football this football! podcast. <laughs> it's going to be strictly football. There you go. And we'll as I am holding a football. Team. As you're holding a football with the Gators logo on. Better than writing on the table, I guess. According well, to my wife. Well, she's not here to yell at you, so I, I know I could have wrote on the table. Now I'm going to pound on the table with the football. Oh man! Well, hopefully the speaker doesn't pick that up. All right, football, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try to cover pretty football. much football. We're going to talk about the divisions of each football. We're going to pick. Who's Basically, going to this is our NFL preview edition. Even though there's a game already played, yep. but this is our preview edition. Yeah. We've been, I know I've been stunned this week, so that's why we have not been releasing the podcast as soon, so we do apologize for the wait. But we will cover the division of the NFL. We're going to pick the winner of the division. We're going to pick who's going to be in the playoffs of each division, the wild cards, and and we're going to pick our Super Bowl picks and who can be this year or, well, next year champion. <laughs> we always think that that always get played in next year. So, But, but it's this year. Yeah. Yeah, technically, you want to... The 2014-15 season. There you go. You want to be technical about it, so... But before we start breaking this down, let's, let's talk about this... this uh, the what, ass whooping that was on Thursday? Yeah. Just, <laughs> I mean, Seattle and the Packers, dude. I mean, if you watch that game, and, and at first, I mean, okay, we thought it was going to be an offensive display. But it was we, impressive. And it goes by my mantra... Defense wins championships. I don't give a flying rat patoo how much the game could be involving to all of this offense and everything like that. As you've seen right here, a team with a better defense is going to win the football game. I don't. If they can stop a prolific offense like the Green Bay Packers. It's like they took the Super Bowl and was like, let's continue and do it to the Green Bay as well. Let's do what we did to Denver, now let's do it to Green Bay as well. And they did it. A healthy Percy Harvin on that team, it, it's, they look really, 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 really good. And they and they look like yeah. Marshawn Lynch still running. Marshawn 20 carries, 110 yards, two touchdowns. They were an impressive team. He had a pass. He had a reception for 14 yards. The boy was just and impressive. Their, and was, their best defensive player didn't even get the ball thrown his way. Yeah, Richard Sherman had no targets. He, they, the, the, it, Aaron Rodgers didn't even attempt to throw the ball to him. And there side. was a guy that said, well, supposedly this guy's the best defensive corner in the league, but he had zero tackles or anything like that. I said it's because he took. He goes, why isn't he following their best receiver around? I said, because Seattle's scheme is completely different. Seattle goes, you stay here, you stay here. There is scheme deep. Their scheme on defense is like no other. You, they, he didn't, they didn't even throw it to the arguably their best player on defense, and they still held them. To, they held Aaron Rodgers to 189 yards. <laughs> And they picked him off. Quarterback he rating takes 47.9. Away, he took away the whole one side of the field. One side of the field was completely taken away. They didn't even look that way. 
because it was just completely, oh, he's over there. We're not doing it. We're not even going to that side. So it's like I told the guy. He goes, well, Peterson and them. I said, Peterson has to follow their best receiver because they have no one else to cover because that's the way their scheme is set up. They have no one else that's going to be able to cover the other guy's best receiver, so they have Peterson follow him around. Same thing, well, Revis, Revis back in the day only took away one side of the field. That's why they called it Revis Island. Right. He took away that whole one side. So he's similar to, to how Sherman is. I told him, I said, they're different animals. I said, Arizona's defense is completely different than Seattle's defense. The schemes of the defenses are completely different. They have, Seattle's strength is that back, their DBs. Their DBs are their strength. Right. They can cover to allow their guys to get to the quarterback and sack them. There, a lot of those sacks are coverage sacks. They got a lot of guys that'll get to them, but they got a lot of they got a lot of defensive ends that are run stuffing defensive ends because see, <laughs> Green Bay wasn't able to run at all. They were uh, stuffing the run. They were stuffing the run because they always have those big guys on the ends to stuff to help stuff the run and everything. And their linebackers, although you may not know them by name and everything, are fast. And they cover well in the schemes. They do what they want to do. Seattle is just a very well thought up, very well schemed team. Yeah. And it, it, it and that's the way that it's just they're just a very 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 sound, very good team. And on the offensive side of the ball, don't shit. You got Percy Harvin who had a hundred yards combined running and catching. As <laughs> though so he combined for a hundred yards. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, they definitely dictate the pace. They ran the ball mm-hmm. very well. Then, you know, Percy Harvin ran the ball. as We're catching the ball, too, so he was mm-hmm. very effective. And it's like now, if this guy stays out for a whole season. Oh, he stays healthy for the whole season. But yeah. yeah. yeah Come I mean, back player of the year. Yeah, I mean, look out. But, predicting it right now. If he stays healthy the whole year, they're going to give him come back player of the year. I'm telling you, man. So, but I'm watching Aaron. It's amazing. It, He's not just fast. But he runs physical as well. To be a little as a guy he is, he's quick, but he finishes runs. He don't dive out of bounds. He runs straight into you. So that whole team has took on this physical mentality. That whole team has took on this physical mentality. Even though the NFL is trying to trend to more finesse, these guys still have that physical mentality, and that's why you win football games. The more physical teams usually in the NFL win the game. So hey, let's Over do- finesse every time. So now, because, you know, they play physical, and we know they caught themselves Legion of Boom, and everybody predicted because these rules going to be changed and effective, but the game's the penalties. Exactly. The penalties Look were... Look the penalties here. We got eight, eight penalties And most of them were, and they were on Green Bay. And, and four, four against Seattle. But that's, that's what I told you after the game. I said, thank God it wasn't like the preseason. They let them play during the regular season, which I said was probably what was going to happen. That all this thing was just to test out and to be like, hey, we're going to be strict or calling it. But we're not going to be, when it comes time to get to the nitty-gritty, we're not going to be as strict as you think we're going to be. And they still were doing their thing. They were being physical. But you did see them back off a little after those five yards. They weren't giving those bumps down the field like they usually do and stuff. So you could see it had the preseason had an effect. But them boys were still playing this rough shot. And they they finish every single hit. They yeah. let you know they, they're, they're there. Mm-hmm. Seattle is just, it, it's just, they're fun to watch. That, that's my kind of football team to watch. That's one of those teams that I like watching. I'll tell you what, man. It was uh, very fun to watch. And, and you really hope that the other officiating crews take notes and call the game yeah. similar to that. You know, let them play and everything like this. Expect to be physical. There's some, there's some certain teams that just have this, this, this reputation about who they are. I mean, yeah, you don't want to make sure that they're over physical. But you want to make sure you know this is that's just how they play. They play smash mouth football. You can't stop that. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers, who is, we can both agree, he's probably a top five quarterback in the NFL. He just he looked he looked pedestrian. He, he looked like he was confused. Eddie Lacy was predicted to be a top five running back. And now he, he can't even remember this he, game. He, yeah, he won't remember this game. And I know a lot of people that have in fantasy are probably pulling their hair out right like now. You? Yeah, like me. <laughs> and but you know what? This is this is what you expected. You're playing Seattle and. Some of the teams, <laughs> fantasy you got, wise, if you're going to play Seattle. When you got Seattle, people playing Seattle, sit them. Yeah. You That's might just what you got to do. You might as just sit them. I mean, it, it was, i tell you what, it, it was, if you're a Seattle fan, I'm sure you were very pleased. Well, if you're just a game. fan of that type of football, that was fun to watch. Yeah. Because they physical you, they finessed you, 
They used every different type of thing. That play where he faked the the end around mm -hmm. to the guy, and the dude was wide open on the pass for the first touchdown. That was ridiculous. Because <laughs> they, they faked like they were running the, the sweep. Right. Like they were running the read sweep. So he read it, and then Russell just pulls it up and throws it to the guy for a 33-yard touchdown. Okay. All right, well, I, love, I, I, I just I, I like watching that team play football. And what gets me excited is that we're taking that that kind of philosophy and that type of system and bringing it down here to Jacksonville as well. So it gets me kind of excited to watch that type of stuff happen up there. And if we can get the type of talent down here that they got up there, we're going to be running the same type of stuff. Exactly. Nice. All right, well, let's break this down. We're going to start I'm waiting about for... Cam Chancellor or one of them other boys that come up in free agency. Because Seattle ain't got the money to pay them. Yeah. And I know where they're going to be looking. Hey. Gus is going to be like, hey. <laughs> hey, Brad, we got, look at how the money we have. <laughs> you down south, you got beautiful weather Dude, projected, here. We're projected to have 60 something million dollars under the cap next year. Mm. By far the most money in the NFL to spend. So, I go on to look. Oh, they're going, deep. Spring, they're going huh? deep. They're going to be buying everybody. <laughs> they're going to be washing in it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. They're well, buying everybody. Well, that was a long game that came on Thursday to open the season, but we're going to go ahead and break down the divisions, and we're going to start with the NFC. Since, ah, yeah. since both our teams are in the AFC, we might as well just say yeah, that for last, yeah, right? Yeah. So, if John was on today, he'd he, he have something to talk about. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> sure. Let's start with NFC NFC East. We got oh. the New York Giants, the Philadelphia Eagles, Washington Redskins, and the Dallas Cowboys. This is a division that usually is pretty interesting to watch in the first place because of the history in the division. And it, lately, it's been pretty interesting yeah. because they've all been average. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that it's came down to the end of the year. So every every year it comes down to the last stinking game, and it's always Dallas and Philly. Dallas so, and Philly. How ironic now that this is. In, at least in NFC, do you think this is the worst division in football, or in, I mean, in, in the NFC, or in the NFC? Yeah, it, it, it's I, them in the NFC South are running the close, but the NFC South has that has that one dominant team in New Orleans. East doesn't even have that dominant team, and they also NFC South could possibly have a wild card team too. But look, well, hey, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I'm not on that Tampa bandwagon. Everybody well, no, is. not Tampa. I think yeah, Carolina. So. I, I'm not even on the Carolina bandwagon. Well, as, as it is. The here, they so. have nobody to catch the ball. But anyway, back to the mediocre division. <laughs> so you got what, what's what's some of your think? What's some of your thoughts about some of these teams in the division? Here? Dallas has absolutely no defense whatsoever. If you have fantasy people playing Dallas, yeah, you play them <laughs> because Dallas is Dallas on the defensive side of the ball is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah, they're good. They're great on offense. They have a bunch yeah. of weapons on offense, but it all hinders on how is Tony Romo's back. Mm -hmm. If Tony Romo's back, they're going to score a lot of points, but they will not be able. They probably could not stop me, you, and a bunch of the Pee Wee kids that we could go and pick up from down the hall. Tina has lost to Marcus Ware and Sean Lee down for the season. Well, it wasn't even. It wasn't even that. They weren't even losing. They were bad when they had them. Yeah. They were just they were a bad defensive team when they had them. They got old and they didn't ever think about replacing anybody. They're just, it, just bad during the preseason. They were getting just murdered. So, so what do you think about Jerry Jones coming saying that they might sneak up on some people? No. The only way they sneaking up on somebody is they score like seventy points a game. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to outscore everybody. These are all gonna be have to be high scoring games. Like they had with Denver last year. Yeah. That's the way it's going to have to be. It's going to have to be those high-scoring games, and they're going to have to hope Romo's back holds up. Then they picked up Michael Sam for a practice squad. I mean, I look, ain't even getting. I, what, I'm not they, even, even going to touch that. I'm not even. Their defense is so bad. They got to do something. I'm not even getting started on that. I'm amazed he's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm legit. I'm amazed he's not even playing for them. I'm amazed they didn't just put him right in. Right in. Well, Jerry Jones is always a businessman, so he's probably finding some way to. Make a oh, he there. did. He's selling Michael Sam practice jerseys. Come on, man. Come. Enough. I, I, I'm not. I'm no, I don't not, I'm not even it. getting in the, the, all the, the get caught. Okay. Just think, there's a thousand other people that got fired too. 
What uh, makes this guy more special than all the other people that got uh, that got cut as well? Yeah. So I'm not even talking about gotcha. that. Yet. Then you got the Giants. Giants, Eli Manning. Oh. Did, he, did he led the league in turnovers last year? He'll probably do it again this year. You think so, huh? He, he, they're not good either. They get they aged. Age, That's yeah. the bad part is these guys aged and didn't get no younger and didn't bring no more people in to help them out. Mm-hmm. At least Philly. With Philly, they got you 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 got youth. I love you got one of the you got one of the best running backs in the league. Yes, but up and coming quarterback. In you the got league. an up and coming quarterback who caught a lot of people by surprise last year, mm-hmm. at the end of the year because he only played those certain amount of games. Now people got film. Now people can watch him. Now people can kind of figure it out. Yeah. So I don't think he's going to be as, as well and efficient as he was last year to this year because it's a different year and people people will watch the film on you figure out your tendencies and everything like that. Because during the preseason, they struggled a little bit because teams were figuring teams were figuring out what to do. And if you got a lot of depth on your defense and you're able to move people in and out, you'll be able to run with them a little bit. More. But they still have a very, very talented team. The loss of Deshaun Jackson, I think, is going to hurt them. Oh, yeah. I think just because you bring in, you still have Riley Cooper, Macklin's returning from injury. You still, you still have that, but... You got uh, the new tight end Ertz. Yep. You still have you still have the weapons, but he, not having that guy is going to be it's going it's going to hurt him a little bit. But with with McCoy in the backfield, it's that's just ridiculous. Now you said something a few I know we were just talking I believe a few days ago about losing Deshaun Jackson. Is it going to bring more pressure? They're going to put more people in the box against McCoy, right? Yeah, they could. They, they they definitely could. But with the way that team runs, the bad part about putting all them people in the box against McCoy is the way Philadelphia runs their offense, you're always in the nickel defense. But the bad thing is you're not able to bring up everybody into the box because you're in a nickel. So you're bringing in corners and stuff and smaller linebackers that are guarding tight ends to bring them into the box, and it, it'll end up hurting you on the back end eventually. So you really, you really, you really can't bring them in. Yeah. Because you're going to be in the nickel the whole time. And I get to see it firsthand <laughs> tomorrow to see actually how we do. Well, but luckily, you, if you have a team that's got some speedy linebackers and guys that will be able to make some plays and you're a little deep in your secondary, you'll be able to match up very well with Philadelphia. But you don't have that guy that you've got to worry about blowing by you anymore. You don't have that dude that's going to run just post patterns. And run down the field and catch deep balls. You don't have that threat right now. I did like that pickup that they got Darren Sproles too. Oh, Darren Sproles is definitely going to be one. They'll put him in the slot a lot. Yeah. I think you'll see him a lot in the slot just to provide that mismatch problem. Yeah. I see you, know, you probably have him. You probably have both him and McCoy in the game at the same time, one on one side, one on the other, to give that that element. You'll see him come out of the backfield a lot. So he, it, it definitely was a good pickup, but you still don't have that dude that's that deep ball home run threat like right. Deshaun Jackson was. And that's where I think they'll hurt a little bit. They'll still be really efficient and they'll still be able to put up some points but I, I don't think they'll be I think I think the NFL will come to them. I think they'll come back a little bit to the pack. Okay. What do you think about the Redskins? I don't think nothing about the Redskins. How much pressure is on RG3 now since oh, Baylor I, done put a, there's a ton, statue of this guy there's in, a ton, in there's Baylor a, there's a ton, There's a ton of pressure on him. There's, there's always going to be a ton of pressure on him because of that his rookie year. If he can't perform up until that rookie year, people will call it a fluke, and he needs to show that that just wasn't a fluke. He needs to stay healthy, number one. That's his number one thing. He needs to stay definitely stay healthy. Washington's still trying to catch up from all them stupid moves Dan Snyder made years ago with giving all these people all that money. Yeah. So they still they still got to figure out a way to get around their own stupidity. As I would like to say, it's a lot like us, where we have to get around stupidity from prior regimes. They just got to get rid of the stupidity of the people that are still there, much like Dallas does. Except their stupidity that's still there owns the team. So, <laughs> so I guess the question is: Let's say RG three, and we don't want to knock on wood. I want everybody to stay healthy, but we know how this is. You get hurt every now and then. Kirk Cousins has been. There's a reason why. Out. There's a reason why Kirk Cousins has not been traded. You say there's a reason. Huh? There's a reason why he has not been traded. There's a reason why they don't trade because they don't have the faith that RG three is going to be able to stay healthy. 
If they did, they would bring in some schmuck to be back up and get what they could out of out of Cousins. They could got a third, fourth round pick this draft for for Cousins, probably. But because they know, they know something we don't know. They don't have that faith, which that's what that shows me. They don't have that faith that they got to keep him and they got to keep Cousins ready. All right, well, who you got winning the division? Philly, Philadelphia, Philly, easy. There ain't gonna be no like, there ain't gonna be no last day thing shit this time. There ain't there ain't gonna be that. You gotta think all these the NFC East is playing the AFC South, so you're gonna have these some of the weaker teams. Apparently, the weakest division in football. You're gonna they, all these guys are gonna play those guys. So there's four games against well they minus Indy. Everybody around else around the league thinks Jacksonville, Tennessee, and Houston are going to be the bottom of the barrel teams again this year. So you got to think these guys are playing them. But but I, I think Philly runs away with it this year. All right. I um, think they do. What's their record? Just this team. I, I, don't, I, really don't, I, I really don't like doing records because every time you say something about a record, it, it comes back. And, yeah. Well, I just this team, this division is interesting right here. I just think they'll back. finish 11-5. Eleven and f- eleven and five, ten and six, maybe somewhere in there. I think but I, th- I think I think they I think they win the division easily. I think they win the division too, and I think they'll be ten and six. Uh, that Chip Kelly offense is always fun to watch. Has been since Oregon and his other coaching days. His, his resume has been looking good. So I I really think Floyd's going to do it too. Now, I think who the team that's going to come behind them. That I, Consequently, it's going to be Dallas going to be right behind Philly. I, I don't want to say it won't be like it, it's, it's not going to be, be close. It won't be close, but Dallas be the next team. I have Dallas them. just. I have Dallas finishing second just because the other two teams in front of them are just. Dallas can at least score points. Yeah. I just don't know. If the other two have too way too many question marks for me to even turnover problems with yeah, Giants, yeah, yeah. and then you know you got Washington just being Washington. Right. They add weapons, so they also got Garcon too. Yeah, but they but, they added them, but they did. Just look at them there in the preseason when they were trying to click. They didn't really click. It's bad when you add weapons. You you, you try to get everybody to gel pretty quickly, and it, it hasn't happened yeah. in Washington. But Philly, Philly running away with it. All right. NFC North, we got the Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings, Minnesota Vikings, and the Green Bay Packers. The Packers. Just we lost. took a butt with them. We got smashed the other night. But... Hey, all faith is still there. They're in a good division. They can I still, still I still them. think they'll. But let's I start still, with Green Bay. What you think? I still think they'll be a good team. They're 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 deep in the. If you look at it, people with a high potent offense have a weak piss poor defense. If you if you it, really look if you look at most teams, you either have great one, nah on the other, two very average. Or eh and good. It it, 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 it it doesn't always equal. You don't you don't get that equal amounts of good on both ends on both ends of the ball. They have much like Chicago. Chicago's known for their defense. Now it's flipped over and now they're known for their offense. Because their defense is a little suspect now. Even with adding Jared Allen and people they're yeah. still a little suspect. Jacksonville made them look mediocre. I know it was a preseason game, but you still take have to take starters on starters in An account, to yeah. account while you're watching yeah. it. Jacksonville blew out the starters of Chicago. Absolutely were dominating the starters from the Chicago Bears. Mind you, that can change between now and then, but yeah. that, is this just by what, what I was looking at and right. what I saw? And by far, Jacksonville is not an offensive juggernaut. By no means. But they... They looked good, and Chicago's defense looked old. It's a lot of these things that these teams that were known for defense are older defenses now. Yeah. And now that all their guys are getting older, and they're, they're coming back. And now they're coming back down going, oh, shit, we're old. Like, look at Dallas last year. Dallas is old defense. <laughs> oh, their old guys left. Now they just suck. <laughs> but Detroit firepower out the wazoo. Yeah. Just between their quarterback and one receiver. 
the firepower out the wazoo. Calvin Johnson and Stafford. Yeah. That, that's firepower right there. Then you add in the running back. So they, they've got firepower, but again, you got Indomitian Sue on their defense, but who else? Yeah. And their defense is suspect. Minnesota, they got one guy and one guy only. Yeah. Here. Yeah, you got to hand the ball to a major Peterson. That's how they decided who their quarterback was. Whoever was whoever was the quickest to turn around and give the ball to Adrian Peterson. Would well, you like that threat of having Teddy Bridgewater who can run the ball? With, I would, uh, Teddy. With that, because you got to think with that. They, man, with him, and then you got Teddy don't, to but run Teddy the don't, ball. Teddy don't run as much as people think Teddy, Teddy does. Teddy don't run a lot. Teddy is a pocket quarterback. Teddy does not run a lot because he's so damn small. Teddy does not run the ball. Even in even in Louisville, he did not run the ball as much as people thought. He was one of those guys that steps up and moves a little bit, but he does not he does not just take off and run. He was not your Taj Boyd, your your uh Winston. He was he wasn't in that mold. He he was him and Blake are the same almost the same guy. But Blake is just a thousand times bigger that if he runs, it's not gonna hurt him as much. If Teddy ran and he got hit one good time, Teddy backs up near his butthole. They compress him because he's a little dude. <laughs> yeah, he it, that 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 was the myth coming. Out. He don't run. He don't run at all. He gives you that little mobility factor. But the guy they got back there now is just as mobile as he is. All right, they so all do them little stepping moves and stay in the pocket. So they're both pocket. We they're both, both pocket passes. So question: We both well. I think we both agree on this that if you look at the quarterback in the division, that Aaron Rodgers is number one in the division. Not Aaron, and Cutler's right behind. Oh, Cutler behind Stafford. Cutler's right behind. Him. Really? Yeah, I, I like Cutler better than I like Stafford. Do Stafford, you? Stafford to me, Stafford to me is a product of the guy he's got work to work with. Ah, right up with Calvin Johnson, huh? You can throw the ball as high as you want to. Calvin Johnson will go and get it. <laughs> he makes you look phenomenal. Calvin Johnson makes you look good. Mind you, in Chicago, Cutler's got two. Oh, yeah. He's got Jeffries and Marshall. Marshall. But combine them two when you have Calvin Johnson. <laughs> nice. Brandon Marshall's a, a good wide receiver. Do not get me wrong. He no. yeah. But both of them combined, they make Calvin. Okay. It, it, I think Stafford is more of a product of because when you see Calvin, when you see when Calvin's not there, he struggles. He struggles. Yeah. When Calvin's there, he looks phenomenal. Why? Because Calvin's there. <laughs> All right. Well, but that... I have I have Cutler the second second best guy, and I trust I trust Chicago's defense more than I do anybody else's defense in there. Do. do you question about what Brandon Marshall thinking that he can have an MVP caliber season? Who Jay Cutler? Yeah, it's up to them too if they. It, if he For him have to have that season, them two have to be productive. Yeah, man. Jeffries and him have to be productive. And they have to come out and they have to play. And that line has to hold up. Washington he Jay- can't get his ass kicked. No. Washington Jay's my Broncos day. And I, I can say he come down a little bit, but he used to gamble a lot. He yeah, but, he, but, he's, lot, he's, but he's, 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 he's matured. But you got to yeah. think, though, in Denver. <laughs> well, he had Marshall and that was it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now he's at least got that. Other guy, plus he's got Forte in the backfield. Yeah. So he, he's got weapons. I like, I, but the thing that gives me is Chicago's defense. I like Chicago's defense more than anybody else in that division. I still root for Jay. I mean, I, I hope he does well. And if he does have an MVP caliber season, by all means, we'll see what happens. But if he had that, if they had this MVP caliber season, if Robert Smith did that, they can easily take this division. Oh, yeah, they'll light it up. So I, the, who you got taking the division? Chicago. You got Chicago taking I the division? I got Chicago. Yep. I got Chicago even before I seen Green Bay play. Really? I had Chicago. Because, like I said, I like their defense better than I like any other defense. Uh, I'm telling you, man. With all, all, all that comes down with yeah. me, you can have all the firepower you want to. Mm-hmm. I look at that defensive side of the ball and who you're going to be going up against every single time that you go out and play a game. And I look at who you're going to be going up against and who's most – Who's most equipped to take on those type of teams? And Chicago would be those that team that's most equipped to go up against your Staffords and your Green Bay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna pick Green Bay. I know they just got their butt whipped against Seattle, but I just 
I just can't bet against Aaron Rodgers. Just get used to that a lot. I just, a lot of the season we're going to hear, you people got their foot kicked by Seattle. I think Green Bay is, I think they can win 10 games. That's that's the big with bold prediction. But see, but Chicago I think, I can. I think they can. Chicago easily can win 10 games as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be between those two, but I, I just think that one game was a fluke, and they, they played a great team. They played a freaking Seattle Seahawks, man, who was on a, on a mission to repeat. Man. Well, now so, you're saying that. But now we're, you're calling them a great team. Well, we're, now we're, you're listening to what I was telling well, you in well, February. Well, 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 we're going to further discuss this a little bit more. But. I told you that <laughs> in February. <laughs> so you got Chicago. I got Green Bay winning that NFC North division. And believe me, we will be playing these back whenever the division ends. And we'll but see. my wild card team is coming out of there in Green Bay. Ah. Uh-huh. Okay. Interesting. And I think my wild card team is going to be Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> so, there's, there's three spots there's left three, to the six. Three spots. The NFC South. Oh, my God. All right. We got the Atlanta Falcons. This is easy. The New Orleans the Saints. The New Orleans Saints. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. The New Orleans Saints win this division running away. Well, I'm talking about running away. So you just went ahead and just said, screw the discussing the rest of the team. Yeah, that New Orleans is going to win this running away. Has Tampa Bay improved? Yes, because they got a new coach. Yeah. They brought in a few people. Has Atlanta improved? Last season was just I thought ridiculous was for Atlanta. Carolina, Carolina, Carolina has came back to the fold. A lot of stuff going on with Cam Newton. He's going to be know if he'd be able to hold up a whole year yeah. with the stuff that's going on here. New Orleans. He's got a lot of pressure New Orleans, on him, too. New Orleans has brought a lot in on the defensive side of the football to kind of contradict how good they are on the offensive side. Offensive side of the ball, they're ridiculous. They don't have – they have Jimmy Graham, Drew Brees, but they don't have that other big-name guy, but they don't need it because that system works beautifully with who they've got. But their defense, they made moves on the defensive side of the ball and love the Ryans or hate them. They're both retards in my book, but they're still very good football coaches. And Ryan will have that defense doing what they need to do. And I think they'll be, I think they run away with the division. Uh, And their main reason they do is because of those defensive moves that they make. Because we all know they're going to score. Oh, yeah. A lot of points. Exactly. Got the best tight end in the game, which is. Why? We, I don't even call him a tight end. You don't call him a tight end? I don't even call, call him a receiver. Right? I call him that dude. <laughs> they got that dude. And uh, then they got Mr. Baldman himself. Yeah, I'm telling you. I you think Miami is still kicking themselves in the ass for not getting Drew Brees? They got Chad Bennington instead. <laughs> oh, never mind. Sorry to bring that up, Ooh. Dolphin fans, especially Sean, if you're listening. <laughs> don't want to remind you. Oh, man. Well... I'll tell you what, New Orleans will run with the division. And I think Carolina's going to be second place in the division. They would be a running for the wild card. I think they'll come in seventh place. They they would be just coming up just short to get in a wild card spot. But they won't get it. So they, your other wild card team, San Francisco. Hmm. <laughs> I'm good, ain't I? Let's move forward. Hey, I'm season. good. I'm good, ain't I? So, we both got New Orleans winning the South, by the way, in, in, in a... It ain't land for life. All right, there we go. So, NFC West, we have the Seattle Seahawks, who look in dominant fashion on Thursday. St. Louis Rams, Arizona Cardinals, and the San Francisco 49ers. Well, scratch St. Louis because they have no quarterback. Yeah, Sam Bradford. Do you, well, let's talk about them a little Poor bit. Poor Sam Bradford. Do, do you think he comes back, man? Poor he, Sam Bradford. Yeah. Poor guy, he can't catch a break. He can't, man. He may come back, but I think say it. I think Seattle, this draft, going to draft a quarterback and move on. I think it's just that time for this time to, to try to go in a different direction. Yeah, with the quarterback. They, 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 their fans are pissed off that they didn't do it this year and got Blake Bortles. They're, they're legit pissed off and be like, "See, we should have drafted Blake Bortles. What the hell was wrong? None of y'all wanted Blake Bortles until the preseason. No one wanted him." Except the Jaguar fans. We wanted him. No one else wanted him. Even some of the Jaguars fans was booing the yeah, pick. Yeah, but none of, none of them. Cam was like, I like the pick. None of them But some of the other fans was like, who is Blake Bortles? None of them wanted him <laughs> until they seen that preseason game. And now everybody's like, 
We should have drafted Blake Bortles. Why didn't we draft Blake Bortles? Because he was not smart enough to draft Blake Bortles. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling Let you. us have him and be done with it. I feel about the St. Louis, man. They, uh. But that's what they were riding on. They were riding yeah. on, we're going to hold out their another defense. year with Sam because their defense is good. Their defense is amazing. But they're like, we're going to hold out another year with Sam, and then maybe next year we'll go and figure out how Sam does this year. Now they're not even going to get a chance to see how he will finish out this year because he's going to He can't stay healthy. Nope. All right, let's talk. He had a problem in college. He got Cardinals? Hurt, he, got hurt, he got hurt in college. <laughs> the Cardinals are ridiculous on both sides of the ball. Yeah. It's, I do not trust Carson Palmer for anything. You don't trust Carson Palmer? Anything. If my life was right on Carson Palmer to throw the ball through a tire from 40 yards away, I'm, I, I, I just really shoot myself. Because <laughs> I do not car, trust Carson Palmer for nothing well, at all whatsoever. Well, he got some weapons. Not, but I don't trust him. You can have good weapons. But you have to have that trust in that guy. Fitzgerald, but look who he's from uh, Notre Dame. But just look at who, Floyd, right? Michael but, Floyd. But look at who he's running into. Ah, just look at the, the exactly. Whenever I looked at the division last year, had two, three teams, three teams, teams that played ten wins. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So this, wow, this is the but, best division of football. But Seattle is going to up themselves from what they did last year. Seattle is going to be better than what they were last year. Right. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. You're screwed. I just don't trust Carson Palmer. And that's why I can't stick with Arizona. Their defense, phenomenal. Teams in this division, defense. All of them. Defense. All of them. All of them. It's going to be a fun division to watch. Even though San Francisco, I think, is going to fall off a bunch because of all their problems that they're having. They run idiot central. In San Francisco. Larry McDonald. I, I don't know. He, he should be suspended, but he's playing the game. Alden Smith. Yeah. McDonald. They yeah. just run They run idiot central there. You think that, you know, Oakland is right across the way. That's where the thugs come you from, You send them right? out of Oakland. <laughs> That's where the thugs come from, right? But San I still, Francisco I, is known for trolleys and... I still and, got... Uh, I still... And rice Yeah, right. <laughs> Basically... I could have said I could have said something else. Yeah, but I then could, that would have completely. I could it. have too, but uh, we're 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 both on the same people. We're gonna. Be I'm honest. just amazed, Michael. We're Sam being recorded, didn't go to, so. I'm oh, just oh, 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 That's all I'm saying. All oh, I'm saying. All I'm saying. Tweet him, guys. If you have. You can tweet problem. me all you want to. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> but San Francisco. I mean, they're. Colin Kaepernick has not really looked impressive. Their offense. He's me. Their, their offense was on the on the field for like one was the game. The game for like three. They was on the field for like to the third quarter. First unit. That's how bad their offense has not been out of sync. And then your boy. Well, you, 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 you. Old. They're getting old. And your boy that that played for y'all. I mean, he came in, Mr. Gabbert. That boy sucks. <laughs> he. Sucks. He sucks so bad that they had to keep a third quarterback because he sucked so bad. I told y'all he sucked. I told you it wasn't Jacksonville's fault that he sucked. <laughs> he just sucks. So yeah, you want to go ahead and give your give him a because Jacksonville like oh Jacksonville they didn't have no. Problem. It was not Jacksonville's fault that he sucked. He is just horrible. <laughs> He's horrible. <laughs> he sees his shadow and ducks. He's just, he's bad. He's just bad. There was, it's not my fault. It's his fault. Well, if all that was a sport, he'd be good at it. Let's well, see, the thing is, the thing is, and this is my mindset. He came out after his sophomore year of school where he went to Missouri. Missouri was going to the SEC the following year. He goes, no, nah, I'm out. Because he knew. I'm playing against all this soft. Teams that on the defensive side of the ball. If I go to the SEC, I'm not getting drafted as high. I'm getting exposed. He years. goes, hey, they will kill me. So he left before he could get killed. Because if he if Missouri would if he would have stayed in Missouri when they went in the first year in the SEC, nobody would have touched him with a ten foot pole because he would have been getting demolished. Man, he's just trying to make some money, man. That's nah, he sucks. He did make some money off of us, and but he sucks. 
All right, well. Bad, bad, bad Blaine Gabbert. Seattle wins the division. San Francisco is your in the wild card. And I agree with you. Basically, we already talked about Seattle beginning, so you don't really need to We don't have to talk about it, man. And if you watch football, you already know how good Seattle is, man. So no discussion there. They got Percy Harvin, who should be, hopefully, he'd be healthy. No more migraine. Yeah, exactly. Whatever whatever he goes through, but hey, Seattle wins He played one game last year. He caught one pass last year. And then he played the Super Bowl. And basically... And, and went nuts in the Super Bowl. <laughs> we'll keep it moving. Like All I right. called. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I called that. <laughs> All right, well... Oh, hold on. Now out of your team, who do you got making the championship game? Ah. All right, so I do believe in the NFC where these two teams are going to match up. It's going to be New Orleans versus Seattle. In where? In Seattle? I, I'm going to say... Who's going to have the better record? New Orleans or Seattle? Because yeah. I look at Seattle's schedule and I'm like, where are they lose? <laughs> what game are they really going to lose? Seattle have home field advantage. I mean, they, they do play the tough division in, in the NAFC. Hence why they will win. Because New Orleans can't play outside in a pressure situation. Mm. Cold, rainy, bunch of screaming people. But I don't even got New Orleans making it. You don't really got to make the championship? So I, that's my, I think Seattle's going to win. They're going to have the best record in NFC. And, yeah, they will go ahead and face – they're going to face New Orleans. That's my opinion on that. And they, yeah, then they beat New Orleans. The NFC Championship game will be Seattle at home versus the Chicago Bears. Ooh. The Chicago Bears, huh? The Chicago Bears. Interesting. Well, who the week before beat the New Orleans Saints to get to <laughs> Seattle? <laughs> oh, and the fun begins. And Seattle beating the San Francisco 49ers to get in there. So on a comical note, do we see a Michael Crabtree and Richard Sherman part two again? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, so. It'll be part four. Because they'll, they'll have already yeah. played twice in this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good go. point, good point. So, ha! Chicago at Seattle. Yep. Seattle wins. Just because. But that's the kind of game. Close you, game or blowout? That's kind of game. Oh, no, it's going to be a close game. But that's the kind of game you want to watch. Too physical. Do you do? It'll be fun. Well, you believe in this offensive side of the ball for the Bears, huh? I believe more in their defense. I believe that out the other teams, the other teams, their defense is more. Philadelphia's defense is still suspect. All the other teams, their defense is still suspect. San Francisco, too much trouble. Too much trouble. They got too much shit going on. It All says, right. I got one of those. I got one of those feelings. In the pit. In the pit. In the pit of my stomach. Well, you've been right the last few times. I've you? been the last two years. I have nailed the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl winner. Well, guess what, guys? We got them on. We got them on tape. Hey, now. I was on tape the last two years too. <laughs> I was on tape last year and the year before. So you hear it. You hear it. Ball's not coordination. He's on. He's on. He's on. Uh, right. This year I'm wrong. He's on the mic. This year I'll be wrong. But as long as I get the Super Bowl nah, teams right, that's all I care about. Right. All right, interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a brief moment, take a brief break. We'll return shortly. This is the Boss in Your Court podcast. Let's get tight. I'm 
started falling off, disappeared to my fate. They say that hell is real. Analyze my demise, I say I'm super anxious. Recognize I deprived this fear and then embrace it. Vandalizing these walls only if they can talk. Conversations on contemplate to my dark thoughts. Looking down on my soul now. Tell me I'm in control now. Tell me I can live long and I can live wrong and I can live right and I can sing song and I can unite with you that I love and you that I like. Look at my life and tell me I fight. This is that final destination. This is that fancy information. This is that fancy inspiration. This is that crack the installation. This is that quantum jump and that fist pump and that bomb detonation. Please don't bomb my nation. If I'm here, flew away and I got my control when I'm here. You gon' hate me when I'm gone. Ain't no blood pumping, no fear. I got hope inside of my bone. This is that life beyond your own life. This ain't physical. For mankind, this that out of body experience, no coincidence, you've been dying. You're a shit. Back to the Balls Not Court podcast. Hey, that's a new song I just put on there for y'all. So y'all enjoy that. Fine Lotus and Kendrick Lamar. Check it out. I know my boy Kevin, when he did the podcast, they don't really do the music. But you know. I didn't hear it. <laughs> well, they're they going to hear it. Oh, so, Yeah, so. <laughs> Anyways, I probably played with Kevin. Kevin to look at me like, what are you listening to, boy? As I do with most of my music. So. And most of the stuff he watches on television. Yeah, well. Definitely, I know. How the East I got weird taste. Hey, it's not raining in Gainesville. (laughs) All right, so let's go and cover the AFC. Is it bad that I'm actually looking up the weather for Gainesville? That is how bad we want to watch the Gator game, and particularly to the man on my right hand side who was definitely pissed. He was happy. This is the first time. Well, not 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 the first time, but you can tell Kevin don't really post much on social media. But he was like, you see the smile on my face? You know what time it is. It's Gator football. He was And active. then I got pissed. <laughs> and we were sitting there waiting for the game, waiting for the game. It happened. And then, boom, storm. And, you know. So this weekend has become my new favorite weekend. <laughs> and I get today and tomorrow. I know. Yeah, you get to watch the Gators and you get to watch the opening for your Jack. So, we, we, we all get to watch football tomorrow. I know, but I'm just saying, because no. you, watch football tomorrow. you know, you should be happy because you, know, you, you was like, oh. I'm ecstatic. I know you're ecstatic, so. All right, AFC. A- a- football! That's oh, sorry. having a scream again. Sorry. He's, he's, that's not happening. He's going to scream football. Tourette's, other people, because I just yell football. He just yell football. He got a special type of Tourette, so. Football Tourette. <laughs> the AFC East. Turts. <laughs> Includes the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, New England Patriots, Hooray! and the New York Jets. 
You know my thoughts. Well, this division here. I mean, it's all. All my Boston people that listen, y'all know who I'm taking. You just heard it. New England wins the division. I, I really don't see that much competition in the division at all. And please, uh, Gronk, stay healthy. Stay healthy. Uh, For the love of Jesus. And just stay healthy. Stay healthy. Catch two touchdowns. And this will weekend, you stop please? throwing parties? I already saw something on Twitter that you having a block party in Miami. That's why you hurt yourself. Oh, some football. You all that twerking you're doing. You're on a great team. Stop partying. All that twerking you doing. But, you know. I still like what Tom Brady said. I'll retire when I suck. (laughs) You like that statement there? When I suck, I'll retire. Greatest statement ever by an NFL quarterback. Yeah, I'll retire when I suck. Give me your honest assessment. How long, how much, how much do you think Brady got left? Until he sucks? Give me a number, man. <laughs> I don't know because it, it he he just he's, I mean he's, he's in the pocket pack. When then they are the steadiest steadiest quarterback you can think. He, him and Peyton are two of the most steadiest guys you can think of. Never sporadic. Never have that year where you just look at him and go, "What the fuck?" Plus, you got to think he missed a whole year mm-hmm. one time as well. So while he was doing all his rehab and stuff, he was still. Didn't take that punishment of a whole NFL year. Well, they trade their best offensive offensive lineman to Tampa. Yeah, but they must. Have, do we anybody ever question Bill Belichick on why he does things? Do you do you ever question it? You you always know there's a thought process do, behind do, it. Yeah, but you never you never go. What the fuck is he doing? You never do that. You're like he must know something we don't know. That's always our thought that he never. Are you an idiot? It's always, well, he must know something we don't know. Tom, I still think he has three, four more years left in him. Mm-hmm. I think he has a couple more than Peyton does. Mm-hmm. Peyton, just because of his health and everything like that, you don't want to see nothing bad happen to him. Even though you may not like him, you just don't want to see nothing bad happen to these guys. Yep. These guys were the face of the NFL through a generation. My gener- oh, my, it, Well, I rarely say your generation because my generation goes a little farther back. Because I'm seeing guys from my generation retire, going into the Hall of Fame and everything like that. So those were my guys. So it's more of the your generation flowing through to the newer generation that these guys were the faces of that generation. Where guys like Troy Aikman and stuff were the faces of my generation from the quarterback position. Now you've got these guys going forward. Well, let's talk about the Jets. They are transitioning to the Geno Smith era. Suck my dick, Jets. And they are, they let Mark Sanchez go. He played for the Eagles. And he was forcing rumors to get traded to the Rams when Sam Bradford go down. He said, I didn't want to get traded. But now you transition. You got Michael Vick backing him up. Anything that Michael Vick can help help this guy, I, I, I know you don't like the Jets. He can but. turn him into a genius, maybe. <laughs> You just don't have anything nice to say about the Jets, don't you? The disdain I have from New York <laughs> is it, it's it's beyond it, just their fans alone. It, 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 so the only reason you really don't let New York just their fans, right? It's the same reason people don't like us down here. It's because of the fans. Apparently, we're all bad fans. Every team is bad fans. New York just has times 30 bad fans because they got two teams. So they it multiplies that all the people there. It, <laughs> your team can do no wrong no, until they do wrong, and then you bitch about them. But then you do one good thing, and you're like, "Ah, look at this! We're going to that. No, we're not." I get to see you at a, at a basketball and football game up there. Oh, I'd love to go to a game. Up there. <laughs> I know you would. I would <laughs> love to go to anything up there, especially when I know my team's going to beat the holy crap. Out of their team, I would, I would love to go to that, and I would love to hear a guy talk Jets to me because because the thing they're always going to go back to is we got Super Bowl, we won Super Bowl. What the fuck have you done lately? <laughs> the Jets went to Mark San Mark. San- here's a good, here's a very good. Mark Sanchez took those guys. I mean, took them to the AFC Championship game. Back-to-back years. Then Mark has one bad year, and they murder 
Mark Sanchez yeah, because yeah, he yeah. had a bad year. Did you just forget that he took your asses to the fucking championship game? Did you just completely forget about that? Darrell Revis, y'all ran the poor dude off. You ran off your best defensive player. No wonder no one likes it up there. No wonder. You people are spoiled brats for no reason. That's the funny part. They're spoiled, but they're spoiled for absolutely no reason. No reason whatsoever. Giants fans, they won championships. Eli has a bad year. They were like, oh, that's Eli. But you still murdering Eli. The man brought you two championships. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. And just accept now that he's getting older and he's not as good as he was. Agreed. But for the love of God, shut up complaining about a guy having one bad year. If I had to complain about that, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. Any thoughts about Buffalo Miami before we move on? Hell no. Nothing about the Dolphins the neighboring, no. the neighboring Dolphins team down south? They're not neighboring to me. They're six hours away. <laughs> that is not neighboring. <laughs> so we're not talking Miami versus not, the Heat, huh? Miami, Miami. We're not talking Miami versus no, no. the Heat. <laughs> Miami, Miami will be better. Yeah. Miami will be better because they've done some things on the defensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. They'll be a better team. I don't see them competing for a playoff spot just yet. Yeah. Mainly because of the division they're in. Yeah. I don't see them doing that. The Jets maybe will compete for a playoff spot. It all goes on how turnover machine Geno Smith does. Yeah. I see him getting yanked and I see Michael Vick coming in sometime during the year. You think Geno Smith's going to lose his starting job? I think he'll get yanked. And Michael Vick, Michael Vick brings something to any team he goes to that most of the other quarterbacks that he's always backing up or behind don't have. Like, Geno Smith just doesn't have the smarts and the experience that Michael Vick does. And it's going to show, and they're eventually going to want it. When Rex Ryan knows his job's on the line, he's going to try to hand them keys to Michael Vick to save his job. I Man, I think Michael Vick do a great job mentoring him. I think Geno Smith would be better this year. Geno Smith is not good. I just think he's going to... Geno Smith was not good. He was not good at West Virginia. Everybody's like, he was great at West Virginia. They played absolutely fucking no one. (laughs) (laughs) They played fucking no one. Who basically falls every time for this guy here? That's that's basically what you're saying, like, okay. Yes. <laughs> His fucking running backs were better than he was. <laughs> oh man! So we both agree that New England is going to win the division and by yes. a long shot, right? Yes. Uh, yes, I like New England. New England. No wild card in this division, huh? New England. All right. That's it. New England. That's it. I'm agreeing with my partner here, and we don't have anything to worry about. They'll win the division. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> AFC North. Cincinnati Bengals. Hey. Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baltimore Ravens. I like Baltimore. I always like Baltimore. You like Baltimore? Because Baltimore would have been the Jaguars if we wouldn't have got the Jaguars because they were still going to move the team from – they were still going to move the Cleveland Browns anyway. They were just moving them to the team that didn't get the expansion team. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's talk about Baltimore. We happened to get the Jaguars. Baltimore happened to not get anybody. Then I got pissed off because Baltimore won the championship not too long after that. <laughs> like, we could have had them. Son of a bitch. Oh. About that. Y'all could have had Ray we, Lewis mm-hmm. and Florida. <laughs> we could have had, we could have had Ozzie Newsom running our team. Ah. Ed Reed, Ooh, we would have had we would have had a squad. Florida boys, Trent up Dilfer, in North Florida. Trent Dilfer. Trent. Okay, enough about <laughs> the fact that we mentioned his name. But we would have had we. That's a little known fact that wherever they didn't go, Cleveland was they were going to move to whatever city didn't get the team, and St. Louis got the Rams to come. So St. Louis had their team already lined up to come. 
So Baltimore, Baltimore, by not getting the expansion team, got the Ravens. Got, or got Cleveland to come there. Because if Jacksonville wasn't going to do it, Jacksonville was next in line because they were going to be able to provide the facilities, the money, and everything like that that they needed. All right, so the Super Bowl champs from a year... Dropping that knowledge! Years ago. Yes, you Piotr. dropped that knowledge. Oh, no. You know, they were, they were Super Bowl champions. And then, you know, he got a nice payday. Joe Flacco did a nice payday. And he had a down year. Then he pooped. Now they got a couple more options. They added Steve Smith Sr. Sr. Which is Fucking weird. dumbass putting yeah, damn Sr. I had a baby! Now I'm going to put Sr. on my back. Toy Smooth has always been pretty I like good. Toy. I always like Toy Smooth. Yep, yeah. solid. Ray Rice had a down year and distraction on and off the field. I'm not even talking about Ray Rice. We're, we're not going to no. talk about it, but but as far as his on the field there, as far as what you think about the Baltimore do you think they can definitely improve from last year? Can they even make noise in this division? They'll get better. They get better. Okay. Baltimore, Baltimore will be better. Flacco will play better. Yeah. The whole that that whole team will play better. Their running game will be a little different without Ray Rice there, going with um, Pierce. Their defense is still pretty. Their good. defense has gotten better because they've added pieces. Yeah. They they were older. Now they've added the little pieces, and now they're younger. Now they're going to be able to gel together. Pittsburgh old as dirt. Pittsburgh's just old. I don't care what anybody says. They 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 stick to their guns and everything, but they're old. Pittsburgh's oh, getting up they're... in age. Ben ain't getting no younger. They all Sanders. Yeah. Uh, their defense is older players, and I just can't get behind the team that they have older guys. Older guy. Cleveland. <laughs> That's all I got to say about Cleveland. Cleveland. Cleveland fucking sucked. Josh Gordon suspended for the whole year. This uh, whole quarterback debate that we had off season, that every media outlet has been debating. Well, it's amazing though because they drafted Johnny Manziel. They're still horrible, and they got all this media attention being bad. Yeah. Listen, I'm rooting for Hoyer. Hoyer had a solid before he got hurt the year before. He was solid. I'm rooting. For he him. might he might not have had a good preseason. I'm rooting for Snow. Just cable me in. <laughs> and they can never leave Cincinnati. I mean Cleveland. Cleveland. And they can never leave it. There's yeah. another place I have a disdain for. Ohio. I hear that, man. Cincinnati. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Really? Even though they're from Ohio, they're a good team. But you just can't. I can't get behind them full force. I can't get behind them. They have great weapons on offense. Their defense is solid, but I just can't. Go, yay! <laughs> when I think of Cincinnati, Andy Dalton got paid new contract extension. A lot of these guys got that paid that didn't was really very amazing. A lot of people got paid that didn't really. You don't really look at it and go, "You deserve that." Well, the thing about his, and we already discussed it, his contract really sent him. So yeah, it's kind of tricky when you try to read into it. So, but still, I, mean, I always look at the upfront money that they get. Yeah. That's my main thing is the upfront money. We well, got 50, 60, got something like that. 60 up front. something million yeah, dollars up front. Up front. There's where I went. <laughs> so, but I got, I got, actually, I got Baltimore winning the division. You got Baltimore winning the division? Ah, I got Cincinnati winning the division. And I think Cincinnati is going to take, blow, blow this division out of the water. Nope. Probably about three games. This division will be wrapped up probably by, I would say, by week 10, week 11. I think Cincinnati is going to be above above and beyond everyone else in that division. Their defense is solid. Their defense was pretty damn good last year. I think Baltimore had the fluky year, and I think they'll come back strong. Okay. Interesting. I tell you what, though. I think Baltimore come out in this division as a wild card. Oh, you got them as a wild card? Yeah, I got them as a wild card. But I don't think they will win a division. So, yeah, they'll come out as a wild card in the division. Notice I haven't named wild card. I'm just going, yeah, I see that. So, All right, we're going to move to the AFC South. The shittiest division in football, what people call it. That's what people call it. But by far, it's not the best division in the AFC. But we, we, Kevin's got his opinion. We'll, we'll sit there and discuss it. We got the Tennessee Titans, Indianapolis Colts, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Houston Texans. I want to let my partner go first because his team is in here. So let's hear about your Jags. 
improved. Just watching the preseason alone, they are improved. A ton fold. They brought in they brought in more talent on the defensive end of the ball. The rookies that they went and picked up for the offensive side of the ball are going to contribute right away. They're going to be the main focus of the game tomorrow. You'll, you'll see it. They'll be running different type of plays for them. They'll get them involved early, get them going. I know it's going to be in a hostile environment, but they're they're going to they're going to try to get them going. Uh, uh, the running running game with brought in uh, Toby Gerhart. Uh, uh, Robinson is now backing him up. Denard Robinson out of Michigan. Yep. Now he's the backup running back. So you got that mixture of speed and and bulldozing of Gerhart mixed with the speed and quickness of, and actually he, he's become a more physical guy too. And Denard, he's gotten a lot bigger. The defensive side of the ball. What I always tell you, the defensive side of the ball is where I look to see if that team is going to be able to stay in the game and is, is the defense going to be able to make the difference in the game. What Jacksonville has done on the defensive side of the ball is going to keep them in a ton of football games. That they would not have won last year. They're going to win those type of games this year where that defense is going to keep them close. There's going to be no 30-point blowouts like there was last year. Take last year and completely forget about it. People want to keep pointing to last year. Those first eight games, they got blowed out. They didn't score no points. Completely different this year because that defense is completely different this year. The defensive line is going to be able to rotate 10 defensive linemen in and out of the game. Completely fresh guys rushing the passer and everything like that. It's going to mimic what they do in Seattle. Just as good as talent on the front line as Seattle has. Maybe even better. I will say that. Maybe even better than Seattle's front line. The linebackers may be better when you look at Paul Pozluski, who's one of the leading tacklers in the NFL. He's going to be kept clean this year, too. You have, to, you have to take that into account. He's going to be clean this year because everybody's going to be dealing with all the big horses up front. Pozluski's going to be able to keep clear. The name everybody needs to look out for, especially tomorrow, with us being in the nickel the whole time, bringing him in, Telvin Smith out of Florida State. The boy is fast. So smaller linebacker, but fast, able to keep up with tight ends and everything like that. Give us something we didn't have last year was guy to guard tight ends. Tight ends were able to get in the middle and eat us up. This guy can actually guard him because he's actually faster than most tight ends are. So I know, I know it sounds a little weird, but watch out because Jacksonville's going to make the wild card this year. Oh, bold prediction from Mr. Carter. Jacksonville will be wild here. card slot for the Jacksonville Jazz. Jackson You're here in the Boston your Court podcast, and, I, and I'm saying it because you got to think they play Tennessee twice, yep. the Texans twice, Indianapolis twice. You split with Indy. You beat them other two teams twice. How many wins is that? Five wins. That is five wins right there. I really think you only need seven games to win a that wild card is, in the is, AFC. That is five seven wins right there. Then you, you play, on then you play Cleveland. The then you play Cleveland. Uh-huh. Washington. I think Washington and Cleveland, two easy wins. There's seven games. I predicted them to go eight and eight, nine and six. Somewhere in that area and winning the wild card. But, but the only reason I'm saying, I'm not saying they're that much improved. Yeah. I'm just saying because of the division they play in. That is why I'm giving them that wild card spot, just because of the division they play in and they have winnable games. They play Dallas in London this year. Dallas is only good on one side of the ball. But the Jaguars are built to handle teams that are good on yeah, that I, side of the ball. I, I want to say watching them, too, because I watch them play the Bucks and I watch them play the Bears in the preseason. And this is the second football city I, I done lived in, and so I'm forced to watch these games. But... <laughs> I, I was impressed with it. I told Cal, I said, man, on the defense side of the ball, y'all getting a lot of pressure. You're getting a lot of penetration up, up there. It looks completely yeah, different than it did last look, year. Y'all look great, man. So And on the offensive side of the ball, they have young weapons now yeah. that we didn't the have offense before. Is, we have younger is, weapons. It's a working process. And, and I'm telling progress. you, I make, that, is gonna be nice. I make that prediction with 8-8, eight and 9-6, eight and, and six, Blake Bortles will come in by week four, week five. I'm thinking they're gonna they're gonna do something where they bring him in right at a home game, and I think he's gonna be that one to ignite it. 
to put us into that spot. But I definitely think we make we make the wild card. So you saw enough from the prison from Bortles to Bortles. The bit the thing about Blake, he never. Never, even when during the preseason and stuff, you'll see guys take their eyes from downfield and go to the dump off. You never seen Blake look to a dump off. His vision was always down the field. He always was going forward. He was never going sideways with the ball. He was always going forward, and that's the one thing I like doing. Indy's going to win the division, no doubt. Indy's the best team. Their defense very suspect. Indianapolis defense very very. Very suspect. They lost Matthew. I would right? say, I, yeah, and he. I would say the the best defense on this team, even though Houston has those. Oh, in this division. Yeah, in, in this division, the best defense is going to belong to Jacksonville at the end of the year. Even Very though Houston, Houston, huh? Even though Houston, Houston's got Watt and Clowney. Clowney. It's the only two guys they got. The rest of it's suspect. Their secondary. <laughs> Houston's secondary is poop. Clowney and Watt are going to what makes that team run. The Jaguars have good guys at every single position. Uh, Dwayne Grotz going to end up being one of a, a very, very good corner. And Jonathan Cyprian, the safety, watching. He's going to take people's heads off. And then and then say I'm sorry, because that's the kind of guy he is. <laughs> Our linebacker, for God's sake, he's had 150 tackles almost every year. He's been in Jacksonville. Pozuski's a beast. Just think of what he's going to do when he don't have people coming to his level and blocking him. He's going to be able to roam because you got the big man up front. Mm-hmm. Red Bryant is a monster. Chris Clemens is going to be coming off the edge. All these guys now, that, and they're going to be continuously rotating in and out. So they're going to be continuously coming in fresh. I, I just want to say, I'll be interested, man. I, like I said, I think the Colts are winning division. I don't see a wild card coming to the division. I think Jacksonville, though, can be competing for that second spot behind in that division there, because Houston, as good as they are on offense, who they got to throw the ball? They don't. They don't have nobody. They got DeAndre Hopkins. They got Andre Johnson. They got a- Arian Foster. And Andre Johnson is not happy to be there either. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> it's it's like you got all this offensive talent, but you got no one to throw the ball, direct traffic, and then the quarterback that they had, Case Keenum. Released them. They traded for Ryan Mallett, right? Yep, Ryan Mallett. So Ryan I'm assuming Mallett. that he's going to be the starter. Ryan Mallett's there, there, and probably by and week four, Ryan Mallett will be inserted in once it, he learns everything. His, his preseason was, was, yeah, man. Ooh. And everybody talking about, okay, this is the quarterback that backs up Tom Brady. Well, let's talk about uh, the guy in Minnesota who's starting right now. How did he look? Castle? Ooh. Yeah, Castle, right? Yeah. He didn't look he didn't look late. Like, he had a great year. When they pray was down, so people like you, you like forget that. Yeah, you forget though. But that, Jacksonville, I, New England has that system. I New like England. I like Gear That was a good move that y'all got for him. Yeah, Bortles he's a beast. Not a lot of impressive. wear. Not a lot of wear on Gerhardt. He didn't know what's going on too. He didn't know like, listen, this guy. Oh, Henny knows. I'm, Henny a, knows. I'm a coach's guy. And the good thing out. is they're going to be giving him reps with the first. Like I said, don't look for not the first home game, but that second, third home game. You'll see them slide number five in, and then the place will go. But the best part is the energy here has been well beyond what it is this year. I want them to compete, and I want them to be in games. I don't want to see more blowouts, which I don't think is going to happen this year. I don't see blowouts. Will they probably lose to Philly? Yes. Will I be surprised if they beat Philly? Nope. I will not be surprised one bit if they beat Philly. I'll be happy. But I will. I'm sure, I will, I'm sure you if, will if, be, man. If, they, if they beat Hap, if they beat Philly, I won't be surprised. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, we even. Talk I'm not going to say they will. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if they did. And we are. We're both agreed that Tennessee is going to be the last team in the division. Yeah, Tennessee's just bad. They're they're going through this rebuilding phase still stuff. And what? And it, And if it ain't this year for Jacksonville to have that really big year, next year is going to be that. Next year is going to be that year to where you're going to look at Jacksonville as going to be one of those top echelon teams because you got to think all that money we're going to have going into next year. Guys that will be coming into free agency, they'll want to play here. Number one, you're going to get paid. <laughs> Number two, you're going to get paid. Yeah. And everybody, and Gus Bradley has became that dude in the NFL right now that People want to play for him. I agree. Because he's so 
damn excitable. Alright, that's Kevin Bow prediction. And really, I'm sure he would be That happy. was it. He'd be happy. If, yeah, I'd be happy if I got to watch football in the first weekend of the playoff. I would be happy. All right, let's move on to the last division. Even if lose, I'd be happy. I didn't get them no further than that. That's all good. Well, you got progress, progress, and I'm sure you appreciate progress. It depends on who they play as well yeah. going in, going into that first round. Definitely. All right, AFC West. We have the Denver Broncos, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Oakland Raiders, and the San Diego Chargers. San Diego? Yeah, I don't know why I have that. Saint Diego. 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 It means Wales vagina. <laughs> All right. Well, Here's my Ron Burgundy. For the- my team is in the division. I will go first. Denver Broncos. Ah. Oh, the Denver Broncos. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. The Sims, I remember that. The Simpsons yeah. Episode. <laughs> All right. I did not buy you the Dallas Cowboys. Instead, you got this. Oh, the Denver Broncos. Uh, my heart's been broke twice the past few years in the playoffs. You know, we had this long Hail Mary, Hail Mary catch by by the Baltimore. And then hell and, ass whooping. And then, yeah, then we get to the Super Bowl, and and we just got stumped, man. We just got really beat bad. It was just from the, from the snap from the get, though. You can just already tell what kind of game it was going to be. So John Elway just feel like, okay, this is, you know what? This is a make or break year, so I'm going to go ahead and break the bank. He brought in T.J. Ward. He brought in... The Marcus Ware. He brought in everybody. He, he brought in a kid to lead. So this is where I'm hoping that okay, now you got a defense side of the ball to help Von Miller. So we lost Dumerville to to the Ravens. So we did miss that pass rush a little bit. Derek Wolf was hurt in and out of the lineup. So I believe that we'll be all right. Chris Harris, he got hurt during the playoffs, so we definitely missed him. Then we drafted Bradley Rose. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, we did. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, he, he was he was pretty good the last few part games of the season. Bradley Roby was our first-round draft pick. Kid's been impressive on the training cap. Cody Latimer, he's going to be our wide receiver who's driving the second round. He's going to have a bigger role now that Wes Walker suspended and had a concussion and everything like that. So we we got Emmanuel Sanders from from Steelers. So that's going to be a huge pickup. It's, it's, right a, now. it's a huge pickup because we lost Decker, but we got Sanders for a cheaper cost. So I mean, you well, right now, make... it, right now, it's a huge pickup just because of. The West Relker situation. Mm-hmm. It is an extremely huge pickup right now, which I think Sanders would have been the number two wide receiver on the team, right. even if even if uh, Welker would have been there. Keep your eyes for off of Cody Lambert. That's going to be a fantasy pickup. I'm telling y'all, kids looking pretty good. And Broncos has got they got better on the defense side of the ball. I mean, we're going to miss no Sean Moreno. We're going to get the ball to Monte Ball. This is who I wanted the year before in the draft. This is his time to shine. Hopefully, he stays healthy. We got Randy Hillman. Hopefully, he can hold on to the ball. <laughs> Somebody just the, the, so. the weatherman at the Gator game just got a standing ovation because they said there's no lightning in the area. Nice. So you know what? I think my Broncos, even though I, sorry, that was funny. Man. I know Kevin off in the tangent. My Broncos, and I said that is we had one of the toughest schedules here. You and, got a and, very tough schedule. And as Kevin and John picked at me, and they said, "You still think I?" believe my Broncos can win 12 games. 12 games, they win the division, and they will, will – I'm whole off there. They will win the division. Kansas City, I don't – they had a nice start off to the year last year where they were basically scaring Denver because they, sometimes they was leading the division. But you got but you got to look. Kansas City played a bunch of shit at the beginning of their schedule. That's why they went on that big, gigantic mm-hmm. winning streak. They played a bunch of crap. Yeah. At the beginning of the schedule. Then when they got into the hard part of their schedule, Kansas City came right back to Denver. And that's what happens when you get when you go through those spurts in your schedule. The bad part is Denver has no just spurts in their schedule. The whole thing's tough. Yeah, so now the AFC West is not going to be playing the NFC West. <laughs> so, I mean, now... Where do you get, get Seattle this you year? Get, you get Seattle. We play them... Um, we play them. I think we play them at home. We get Seattle at home, which would be good for the Broncos fans because they, they can. We <laughs> <right laughs> took the- this from us. <laughs> Why? So, Oakland. They got Derek Carr starting. Matt Matt Schaub did not win the starting job. He lost it to a rookie. Terrible. So Derek Carr is going to hold the Rams there. So he'll be the starting quarterback for Oakland. Oakland also got Kevin's old boy Maurice Jones Drew, which will be a pretty good pickup from them. They, they got an aging. 
but they're they have an aging backfield. But, but he's from home. He's from there. Yeah, right? and that's the reason he went back is because it was it was close to home. That's the reason he home. went back. San Diego. He I'm didn't a... want to be here no more. <laughs> Good for him. Good happen. Yeah, over there. Now you're going to be even worse than San... what you went through here. San Diego is going to be interesting. They got Phillip Rivers, who I think has always been solid. He's always a high. My other wild game. card team. Which is, I, that's my wild card team, too. San Diego. They, last year, Denver had three teams to come out of here. As, uh, uh, no, there's only going to be two. I'm sorry to tell you, but you play at Seattle. Oh, that's why I can't remember. But, uh, at Seattle. Oh, yeah. we, play at, we play at New England, too. You so. play at Seattle and at San Francisco. No. You play at Seattle. Then you have a bye. Then we at least you get San that. Francisco at home. Yeah. So San Diego, they also got Ron Matthews and uh, that's Keenan not this, Allen. Keenan Allen is really. It's pretty, not that. Really it, it's it's not that bad as I thought it was. Play all your games at four o'clock. Oh no! Play one game at one <laughs> against the Jets. The Jets kill them. Hey, we get to see Eric Decker. You get to kill him. <laughs> so we're in the greens here. Denver Who really? The division. Yeah, Denver wins the division. San Diego goes to the wild card. Goes to the wild card. Yep. You got San Diego and Jacksonville is your wild card. Yep. And I got Baltimore as mine. Okay. And that means San Diego probably playing uh, Indy. Okay. And Jacksonville will be playing Baltimore in my thing. All right. Well, Jacksonville may, I don't know. So Jacksonville may move on to the second round. Only to get murdered by Denver. <laughs> All right, well, it's go time. What you think? What, what you, what's going to be the AFC Championship game? New England and Denver. In New England. In New England, huh? Yeah, because New England don't have to play. All them people y'all got to play. Yeah. So I I'm think a- they'll have the home field advantage. You might laugh at me for this, but that's okay. Because... I, I said this team is going to be pretty darn good. It's going to be the Denver Broncos at home versus Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals. Listen. Hey, I did I, that. I did the weird one. I, 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 this, Although yours I, is reaching a lot more than my Chicago. <laughs> I feel like Andy Dalton is going to get over this hump. He's got a great defense. Marvin Lewis has been a great coach for years there. And it's time for him to go ahead and make a run here. I think you know what? I think they're going to be the second best team in the AFC. New England's going to win the division, but I think they're going to be the second best team, and they're going to go. New England's going to go to them, and Cincinnati's going to take care of business. Actually, Cincinnati's going to get the first round. <laughs> they're going to have a bye, and they're going to beat New England. I think they're going to beat New England. I, call me crazy, and believe me, I'm on tape here. Don't worry. And there's been a few times where I. There's been a lot of times I've been wrong. And look at Kevin. He's like, not in the head. There's been some times I've been wrong. <laughs> yeah. I, I lie. <laughs> so that is going to be my bold one. I think Cincinnati is going to be contending, and they're going to end up facing Denver. Denver will go ahead and beat them, and it's going to be a close game with Denver too. I don't think we'll blow them out. I think it'll be a close game. Cincinnati's going to be a good team, man. Cincinnati's going to be a good team, and I will eat crow. I will eat crow if they win nine games. I have to fight them in crow. <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you, if they win, I, I, I feel like they would be the second best team in the AFC. That's my bowl prediction. And now we're going to move on to the Super Bowl. <sighs> you want to go first? Or go first? New England and Seattle. With the Seattle Seahawks repeating as Super Bowl champion. Nice. Repeat! So you got New England being Denver. Repeat! And you got the uh, Seahawks repeating. Repeat. All right. Repeat. This Football! Is, Repeat. It's going to be Seattle and Denver. It's going to be a rematch. And as long as Denver stay healthy on the defense side of the ball, as I know Seattle has lost some pieces to Jacksonville. And everything like that, but he still, still looked, didn't. They they still has, yeah. looked pretty dominant. It didn't seem to affect Percy me. Harvin is looking pretty great. There's your key. Listen, them back. Denver was rattled, man. When they played, we we all can 
any football fan gonna watch that when you saw the first snap and you look at their eyes, man, they're like they they got they got scared. I hate to say it, they got well, scared. Well they admitted it. They said they, they were scared of they, Seattle. They got scared. And you'll so be now, able to tell by that game. So now the fact that we got I keep to leave probably one of the best corners in the game. Yeah? I wouldn't argue. I said I wouldn't. Oh, you went okay. I wouldn't argue. TJ Ward, we had some safety issues there. Champ Bailey was getting burnt all over the field. That's my boy. I love Champ. We just got uh, over Champ man. Bailey was also 147. Yes, he was, and I'm 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 sad right now. He 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 is not. He's not employed. No, he ain't. he got picked up. Did he get picked up? I think he's getting picked up by. Yeah, I know he got released by the Saints, but somebody picking him up for old people prison. That's good. That's good. I think Denver will go ahead. This will be a, a great game. This will not. This will be part two where this was supposed to be how it was supposed to be played. The best offense versus the best defense. Yes, Denver will have the best offense again this year. I will predict that. They will have the best offense again. I don't know what Peyton Manning would throw that many touchdowns. But they would be definitely up there and probably be the best offense along with a, a competent defense. Von Miller being there and being healthy. Von Miller is a beast on the field. There was... There was some grab that they showed his number on the field being on defense where the quarterback pass completion goes down at least about 15, 20%. Von Miller means a lot to our defense. That's why he's my favorite player. I'm still, now that Chambe is gone, I got to transition and get his jersey. Because I love Von Miller, even though he got to stop doing stuff and taking an enhancement drug and stay out of trouble. But Von Miller is, <laughs> I can't even laugh. Uh, he was with Wes Welker taking Molly. We yeah, doing something. So we got Pot Rose, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Terrence Knight. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so that boy has always been in the middle. He stayed healthy. We got he Darryl hasn't Moore. He always been in the middle. He was there just last year. Yeah. Because we let you have him. I appreciate it because he, he did some work. He has a fat he, man. He did some work. So That's a big QB. He, he is a big work. So I believe this defense, as long as we stay healthy, Chris Harris Jr. don't have to move. To, he can be now a number two cornerback now. He wanted to be number one. He can move to number two and guard the second best receiver. Number two. Denver will, will win the Super Bowl 38 to 31. Rematch. And Peyton can walk away, retire if he wants to, and then we move on to the Brock Osweiler years and we go back to being seven and nine, eight and nine. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> All right, so that's me and Kevin predictions on the season here. Kevin has been known to be in Oshawa the last few years, so we'll have to see if it's come clutch. I'm a, so now he's pissed because I picked him. I know, right? Yeah. He's like, he's always he's like, been, son of a bitch. He's always been right, man. So I'm like, oh, darn it. Son of a bitch. He's picking New England. So well, let's get into it. We already we got a game in like seven minutes. We're going to do the picks right quick. So, seven minutes. Yeah. Seattle, Green Bay, we already know who won that game. I would have so picked Seattle anyway. Yeah, I would have put Seattle too. So Seattle won, 36-16. Now we're on the Sunday. We got New Orleans at Atlanta. New Orleans. I got New Orleans, and I got Drew Brees throwing for 400 yards. <laughs> I hope. You better not hope. <laughs> I better not hope. Because he's going to kick I, the, I, I'm going to kick the yeah. shit out of you. <laughs> so that's my bow What's your bow prediction for this game here? Um, One of the Atlanta wide receivers goes for over 150. I hope it's Julio Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Roddy White. <laughs> you son of a... Oh, Roddy White. <laughs> All right. The Vikings at the Rams. They're playing at one. And I'm going to go with Minnesota. Me too. Adrian and, Peterson has 175 yards. All right. Just so, because I wanted to. And two touchdowns. St. Louis Rams defense is pretty good. They get five sets total that game. Pretty prediction. As long there. as they run the ball. I don't give a As long as they run the ball. Okay. Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh. You got Pittsburgh winning? Yes. I so do I. Bold prediction. Johnny Manziel comes in the game, gets decapitated. <laughs> Bold prediction. I think that Hoyer's going to do pretty well. You don't have to worry about Johnny him. Manziel comes in the game, gets the clipboard shoved up his ass. <laughs> I think he's going to throw for about 250 yards, probably get one touchdown. I mean, it won't be enough to beat the Steelers, but they, you can see that Hoyer will be coming in quarterback. So, hey, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. It pains me. Philadelphia. Philadelphia wins too. I agree with that. The, I, my prediction here is the score is going to be closer than what people think it will be. Yep, it'll be a six-point game. I agree. Yep. 
Yeah, so we both grew in that position there. You got the Oakland Raiders at the New York Jets. Oh, fuck it. Who are you going to pick? I'm I'm not picking that game. <laughs> All no, right. The Jets. The Jets. Michael Vick will enter the game at some point in time. <laughs> All right, yeah, New York Jets was win, but I will say Derek Carr will have a better game than Geno Smith. My bold prediction, Maurice Jones-Drew will have under a ho- un- over 100 yards. Okay. Cincinnati Bengals at Baltimore, Ravens. I'm going to pick Baltimore. <laughs> and I'm picking Cincinnati. And my bold prediction is Joe Flacco has 300 yards. Ooh. And they eat up Cincinnati. All right. Bernard will rush for 105. Years. And Ray Rice will pop his wife in the face <laughs> after they win in <laughs> celebration. Giovanni Bernard will run 105. Years. Giovanni. I hope he does. I'm predicting all your fancy players. Yes, mind. you are. You're predicting What the crap I'm doing God, here, man? Get the crap out of you. I Jeez. like it. This is not cool, man. I like it. Buffalo Bills at Chicago Bears. Chicago. Jay Cutler throws for almost 400 yards. Yep, and I pick Chicago, and Jeffrey is going to have about 150 yards. <laughs> so there you go. So that'd be right. I have Jeffrey. Do you have? <laughs> 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 Not in any of our <laughs> leagues. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> let me see. <laughs> I'm going to stop, stop predicting some of your guys, I, man. I, I ha- you should have predicted Marshall. Oh. I know I have him in one of our Oh, leagues. gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, I nah, oh. I want to try to stick away from that. So Let me see. <laughs> we'll move forward while Kevin search. The Washington Redskins versus the oh, Houston You should have picked Hessons. Brandon Marshall to have a big game. Nah. I'd rather you pick Brandon Marshall because nah, yeah. I got him. The Washington Redskins at the Houston Texans. Who do you have? They're playing at the beautiful Reliance Stadium. Who you got? Who? Washington Redskins. In Houston? And Houston Texans. You kid. Ew, God, this is horrible. Washington. <laughs> yeah, I Washington. don't know why. How you got Adrian Peterson in one league? Because I'm awesome. And then I, I got him in the other league. <laughs> I hate this shit. I'm going with Houston. J.J. Watt, Davian Clowney combined for four sacks. I'm going with that. Uh, RG3, they can sack RG3. And hopefully he You're going with Houston? Here. See, I want Houston to win. I need that. <laughs> Kansas City. Tennessee Titans versus Kansas Tennessee. City. And we both agree it's going to be Kansas, Kansas City. And I will say that. Quarterback there would have Alex a Smith. Alex Smith, as I wouldn't bring that. Alex Smith would have a rushing touchdown. New England at Miami. New England, Miami. New England. Rob Gronkowski has two touchdowns. You know what? Miami always played them well at home. Miami always does, but 8 and 0. Oh. Miami will win this no. game and they will win by a field goal. Eight. They will beat New England. That is my bro prediction. Eight, eight. <laughs> New England is no, it's New England is five and zero oh against Miami when Rob Gronkowski played. Okay, all right. Well, I'm this is I'm picking an upset alert. Miami will go ahead and beat New England. Sean, I'm calling you out there. I know you're happy, buddy. So I don't know who that happened, but Miami cannot do it. If they want to. Carolina <laughs> at Tampa Bay. Carolina at Tampa Bay. Who you have? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. I got Carolina winning. And I got Cam Newton rushing for 75 yards. I got the, uh, Lee Evans. Lee uh, Evans, the rookie wide receiver for uh, Tampa Bay. I have him scoring a touchdown. All right. This... I don't have him. I'm not paying attention, but I still have him. <laughs> San Francisco 49ers at the Dallas Cowboys. Who you have? The Dallas Cowboys. Sally enough. I mean, agree. I agree with you. The Tony Cowboys. Romo throwing for 300 yards and a couple of touchdowns. All right. Colin Kaepernick throwing for two interceptions. That's my bold prediction there. And one of them will be returned for a touchdown. Even Not against he, Dallas. I, I, I don't think nobody on Dallas's defense can catch <laughs> It's going to be a shootout. If he throws two interceptions against them, that's my bold It's going to be a shootout. Then, so. All right, the Sunday night game, the Indianapolis Colts at Denver Broncos. The Peyton Manning show returns back to Indy, but in an orange and blue uniform. It doesn't return to Indy, though. No, it doesn't. We at Denver, Denver, as I read incorrectly. Son of a bitch. So, the Andrew Luck show is coming to the Broncos. Jeez. Man, this is my team. I need to know this. Good. <laughs> you know, yeah, you thought they played at Denver for the They Seattle play on game. Sports Authority. Feel like my high. I was part of Broncos Nation. I'm a little tired as Oh, shut up. <laughs> I can't use that. Stop being a bit. 
<laughs> but hey, tickets are available for $114. Y'all want to go to the game? Indianapolis Colts. All right, Beat the Denver Broncos. Your bold prediction. Andrew Luck plays like shit. I don't care. <laughs> and they're starting already. All right, Denver Broncos will win the game. Then Denver will win by three touchdowns. Jesus. I think it's going to be a blowout. That's my bold prediction. Christ. My bold prediction. You said they had no defense, right? They don't. Boom. All right. Monday games. We got two games because of the opening season here. We got the New York Giants at Detroit. Detroit. Calvin Johnson goes ape shit. <laughs> That's all you got to say on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to pick Detroit as well. And, yes, I'm, I don't have any other prediction. Bold there. prediction. Eli Manning throws three interceptions. Is that bold? Ndamukong <laughs> Su- No, here's a bold one. Ndamukong Su- does it. Get a personal foul. Oh, no personal misconduct, huh? Does it? All right, one more prediction. I'm going to get Kevin off to, to the Gators game, and I'm going to go ahead and close this up. San Diego, Chargers at, at Arizona Cardinals. What San Diego. San Diego. Bold Philip prediction. Rivers with a couple of touchdowns. I got Arizona winning, and I got Patterson returning a touchdown. Look, it's not raining in Gainesville. Boom. All right. So they we- have fans. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for us. We... I'd like to thank you for listening to the podcast. Make sure you follow me at Twitter at Indomina CP, Mr. Carter. Me at Kevin C2415. You can find our podcast at Boss Not Court Podcast. That's where we're at. You can also can find us on Facebook. We're on Facebook. Just search in the Boss Not Court Podcast. Uh, also, make sure you visit the Hardwood Nation. It's at www.thehardwoodnation.com. It's the fastest NBA news source made by fans for fans. I'm a blogger tribute for the site. Uh, you can follow us on Podomatic, iTunes, Windows, Zoom. Uh, Spreaker, uh, you got many other avenues that we can listen to. I got about 20, 25 avenues. I'm trying, I'm trying to talk to Blackberry still. But, hey, we did get approved for iHeartRadio. As soon as I get a link and get an email from them, you can also listen to us too on iHeartRadio. So we're pretty much everywhere. Thanks for your patience. I know we've been or there. Or as Floyd weeks. Mayweather would call it, Heart Radio. <laughs> oh, there's a Floyd appearance there. Floyd Mayweather appearance. Heart Radio. Ray, Ray oh, Lord. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we do appreciate you list, appreciate, We do appreciate you listening to us today. <laughs> he took classes from Florida. I did too, for I can't announce any words apparently. So I'm gonna get myself some water. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy some football. Football. <laughs> Night, guys. <laughs>